enjoying a relaxed morning at an absolutely epic campsite. No, because I'm contemplating I've got to carry this with six liters of water up ahead. You're in shape for it. <laughs> <laughs> You've had like three weeks out here to get in shape to carry a little heavier pack. Sadly, this will probably be my last day on the Condor Trail. But check it out, not a bad last night at camp at all. So since I have a longer food carry here, I'm trying to kind of collapse down. Last year I would have just done these, but I'm kind of on burnout, so I'm trying to mix in some other things. Now these Mountain House style freeze-dried meals are okay, you know, but uh, they tend to be a bulkier and a little bit heavier, so when I really need to squeeze, I repackage. Now what do I rehydrate them in? I bring one, and then uh, when I'm done, I'll fold it up, and the next day I'll dump it in and rehydrate in this same thing. Mixes together, but nah. I've gone off the same one for like four or five days before. <laughs> hey, stop making fun of me. So I'm here packing, <laughs> stressing about the next section, and Taters is there drinking leftover wine. Okay, I only wanted to open one last night. At like night. nine o'clock in the morning. Because you wanted to drink it on the way back. Hashtag Taters has a drinking problem, not just the airplane one where you and miss your mouth. we opened it, we have to finish it. <laughs> like a true frat boy that's why you'd like just waste this. that's why you toss the lid away because then you have no <laughs> choice but to finish so yeah if you ever wonder what taters does when i'm not around and she's quote unquote working <laughs> finally getting taters moving there <laughs> can you see her not being able to find a word just okay, to how, do, how ridiculous about was. the relaxed morning but i'm not the reason that we stayed in the tent till after 10 o'clock Except when it's just me, never in the tent that way. Just saying. <laughs> Countdown to a detatering. <laughs> and sadly, it is once again time for Taters to leave. And even sadder, she's not coming back this time. She's abandoning me that. like a puppy in a sack in a lake. Down that way. I'll come back if you need me. <laughs> so I have uh, a week worth of food on my back and on my aged painful knees. So hopefully I won't see you until I see you. And there goes Taters off into the sunset. Note to self, Photoshop a sunset. It's okay, less than two months till the CDT. Then you'll have so much of me you'll be like, damn, I wish I could hike away from that guy and go back to work. And the reason she was leaving at this point was because I now have to descend down a thousand feet to this next canyon and then climb up a better part of a thousand feet on the next one. So yesterday with my knee hurting me so bad and that hiking pole gave way, uh, I, I did 5,000 feet of gain and about 4,500 of down. And it was just brutal. I'm still limping a little because of my right knee. I'm hoping to just take it a little easier and then rehab it. Didn't really have that choice with how things worked out yesterday. I was able to get replacement hiking poles from Jen. I'd actually ordered them a while back and she had them in her car. So I do at least have functional poles because trying to go down with just the one yesterday, I can't take enough pressure off of my knee. Freaking knees. I didn't film much last night just because things were a little tense in Camp Masticator. <laughs> Jen, uh, Jen and I basically made a plan over the phone and both of us walked away with different interpretations of what that plan was. Um, wildly different interpretations, which resulted in her coming up to that camp, not seeing me, leaving at 2, only to have me arrive at 2.30 and have to, like, chase her down the hill. And there were a couple of extenuating circumstances that led to it, but basically our takeaway was not only have a plan, but really have some sort of a written plan that we both have. And we do have a doc where we note mileages and resupplies and things like that, so we should have just had the details there. As I've said, backcountry rendezvous, things always go wrong, <laughs> if anything can. I am now around mile 318, I think, of 409, uh, so no more resupplies. Jen didn't drop a bucket because this is pretty far away from Orange County. You know, it ends up being like a five plus hour drive. And if we left a bucket, it would help me right now, but we'd have to retrieve it on the way back. And since I'm probably taking the train back, that would require, you know, 10 hours of driving to get it. So we decided just to load me up 
And of course the fun part, since this isn't like the PCT or the AT, this is the Condor Trail, is daily mileages can vary. I know I have a couple of really bad sections up ahead where my mileage is going to go down. And right now, limping, I'm not gonna push long days and make that worse. Uh, so there is the possibility I'm not going to have enough food to be able to make it all the way, but that's what contingency plans are for. There are no more road walks other than the occasional, you know, dirt road here or there, and uh, no more, you know, easy access resupplies, things like that. Heck, even the Terminus is at a closed campground at the end of a damaged road up on the top of a seven mile road walk to get to PCH and then a mile to a bus stop. So getting out of here is going to be a bit of a challenge even, assuming I make it that far. Because it's only an attempt until you touch that termini. With the PCT, I figured I'd made it when I was six miles from the terminus because I could crawl. With Katahdin, it was basically once I was on the gateway tabletop area past all the third class. On this one, uh, the last bit after Hidden Camp, uh, that's going to be the last hard piece. If I can make it to Hidden Camp and up to the saddle through all the raspberry bushes and everything, from there it should be pretty straightforward coming out. Just a little bit of walking down a uh, fire break. As far as things going bad on the road walk, uh, I think it is the shoe I'm wearing, honestly. Now, this shoe has gotten me 5,000 miles last year through all sorts of stuff, but I had a really hard time adjusting to the road walk. The Olympus is kind of spongy in the middle, and feeling around on the sole, I'm pretty sure that lines up almost directly with the pain point on my feet. So I think before I do another big road walk like that specifically, I'm going to need to try a different shoe. Doesn't mean the shoe's not going to work well for you know the cdt or anything which is good because we bought like 10 pairs because worked on the ect but even on the ect i was really struggling foot wise until about cluiston same kind of issues i'm having here other than more they were just over a longer period but hey that's just the chronicles of the world's most okay through hiker my feet and other bits are not well uh designed for this sort of thing It's a baby picnic table. Damn. Good to be coastal. And here I thought it was in a remote corner. Well, there's one sign that will never threaten anybody again. <laughs> okay, well, a rather public porta body considering I think this is the trail. Hey, spooky. Looks like some sort of mining equipment. Got a bit of a chilly wind coming in. Uh, looking ahead, it looks like a good chunk of the next couple of days is going to be on dirt road like this, but don't worry, there's some rough bushwhacks after that. Well, that's uh, different. <laughs> Cow death ball. The problem is, of course, I just kind of get into it and I'm uh, going along and almost end up missing a turn. It just looked like another driveway. Uh, 
Okay, end of the road. I just need to go up the trail as far as I can while still having water. I have a 17 plus mile water carry and I'd rather not have to carry cook water up through part of that. Better just to hit it tomorrow. I'm really not sure how to take that. This is really cool back here. So I found signage and paperwork for Hobbit Mine. Not sure where the actual mine diggings are, but uh, this was one of the campsites I was kind of hoping to use. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. So inside the one bottle is basically paperwork for a mine claim. Well, with that campsite flooded out, uh, this is kind of the only thing I could found, find around here. It looks like there was another tent set up. Still closer to the water than I would prefer, but it's like this might be my option tonight. Okay, looks like this is what I got for the night.